Okay. Okay. Um, we're starting a little late, but that's okay because the uh, keynote finished a little late. So let's let's get going. Um, hi, my, my my name's Matthew Wilcox. Wow, I haven't even done a thing. Oh, am I still broke? No, no. Um, my, my total contribution was, in fact, $50, uh, which I put in the hat. Um, the uh, you lot were very, very generous. Um, we have, I believe, raised more than $36,000 for research into Tasmanian devil cancer. That's incredible. You're all wonderful people. Um, but what I'm, what it, <laughs> the reason that I was here in the first place is to talk about uh, solid-state drives. Um, so, back in, and, and, and anyone care to care to hazard a guess? The IBM 350 was the very first hard disk drive. Anyone care to guess what year it was released? 84. 84 earlier. 57. 57. You're very close, sir. 56. <laughs> we are using technology that's been around for 50 years and hasn't changed all that much, really. Um, this is not an IBM 350. <laughs> this, 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 this is a random picture of a hard drive I found on the interwebs. Um, you can see it has a, a head which moves across the disk. There we are. There's the head. And the disk spins, and eventually the uh, the data that you wanted comes underneath the head, and then it can read what's on the disk. So back 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 in the early days, you know the the kind of the, the early days of personal computing, when when we're all talking about BSD versus Linux, um, we 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 used to talk about cylinders, heads, and sectors. So uh, a, a cylinder is the same thing as a track. Only if you've got multiple heads, it's you know it's all the tracks underneath that are vertically the same. A number of heads, I mean hard drives could have like 10 heads. These days they have two, generally. Um, and the, uh, the, the each track is divided into sectors. And so you would tell the drive, get me cylinder 3, head 1, sector 90. And that worked, um, it worked okay at the time. And um, uh, hard disks don't work like that anymore. They're, they're, they're a lot more complicated. They, uh, they so we, we move over to thing called logical block addressing. This this allows us to have uh, variable numbers of sectors per track. It allows the drive to uh, actually map around bad sectors. I'm, I'm sure many of you remember when we used to have defect lists. And ext2 still has support for bad blocks. You 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 can you can use a drive that has bad blocks. But if it's a modern drive that has bad blocks, it doesn't have bad blocks for the same reason that drives used to have bad blocks. But disks actually used to come with a list of bad sectors taped to the top. And you, you, would, you would enter these numbers into the bad blocks program. It would mark them, and EXE2 wouldn't use them. But we, we've come a long way since then. So, so that, that, that's one side. That's, that's what a hard disk looks like. And then, then we have uh, flash storage. And Flash has its own peculiarities. Um, generally, there's a special interface to it. It, it doesn't. It, sometimes it's uh, like a device all by itself. Um, <coughs> it has characteristics. Um, uh, early Flash and modern expensive Flash, you had one bit per cell on the Flash. Nowadays we have, and, that, and that's called SLC now. Now we have MLC, where you actually can for, for each gate you can store multiple bits in it, and and, and they do this by having, you know, um, th those of you who've studied um, you know, how transistors work know that you know if if the voltage is below 0 0.7, then that's a zero, and if it's above 2.4, then it's uh, and it's a one. Well, they, 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 they divide the voltage ranges. So you have to be very exact about how you measure the voltage on the cell. Um, they have they're, they're, they're construction a way that has um, you with with, 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 with with disks, you could read and write one sector at a time. You can still read and write one sector at a time with flash. Um, but you can't write until it's been erased. 
when you write to a flash, it's like an etch a sketch. You can o it's 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 a one way thing. You can only transmit a transmute a bit from one to zero. If you try and transmit a bit from zero to one, it simply won't work. You'll, it will it will stay stuck at zero. So you have to erase a block before you can use it, and you have to push it all back to the s to to the one state. It, like everything in the erase block gets pushed back to the one state, and that's why it's like an etch a sketch. You have to shake it up a bit. And you've 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 got your uh, you've got your voltages back up all the way up to one, and you can start to drain the ones that and draw your picture again. So because they're a bit special like this, we have some specialized file systems in the Linux kernel to drive uh, flash devices. Um, JFFS2, LogFS, JFFS I think has been taken out now. The original JFFS. Do we have any more? Are those are the only special flash file systems we have. Entry. Okay. And UBFS is, is is on its way. So I, I, I'm not. <coughs> in, Intel decided to get into the, uh, the, the 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 selling flash hard drives. And so this is, these are hard drives which pretend to be uh, real serial ATA hard drives. Intel are not the only people doing this. We have competitors in this marketplace. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not going to talk about why Intel SSDs are better than everybody else's SSDs. Uh, that's not why you're here. You, you already know Intel hard drives are better. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, some of our competitors are coming out with drives which have very similar performance characteristics. And really I'm talking about the performance characteristics of drives like this and what Linux needs to do to um, use them effectively. So. The whole, all, all, all the rubbish about different size erase blocks, forget about it, not interesting. The drive hides that information from you. Um, so what, 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 what we care about is you know, what, what characteristics um, these drives have. And so they're very parallel. Um, the serial ATA protocol allows you to issue up to 32 commands to the drive at the same time. And that's great. Um, SCSI would be better. SCSI lets you have up to 256 commands, but uh, 30, 32 is not bad. Um, seeks, that is um, non-linear. So you know, if, if you read sector 1, and then you read sector 2, and then you read sector 3, that would be a linear read. Well, reading sector 1, reading sector 80, reading sector 962, you're doing a seek. And seeks are really, really, really expensive on hard drives. Like, really expensive. Um, there's also an internal remapping layer uh, that that hides all the details of Flash. Like Flash wears out over time. Uh, there's, uh, if you buy a piece, a piece of Flash, they will say, "Oh, you can write to this 10,000 times," and after that, you it will start to degrade. You will start to lose data. Um, and so, uh, with um, a cheaper SSD that doesn't have a block remapping layer. Uh, you will find that, w for example, where your file system journal is will start to wear out rather quicker than uh, where you're keeping your movies. Because you record your movie once and then you watch it. And that's it. And then I, I, I've looked around my hard drive. Most of the stuff I have on my hard drive I have written once. And I've just kept it for years because I have, a re I have a large hard drive. I mean, we all have large hard drives these days. And we just download data and keep it when we could. We really ought to just delete it, but we can't be bothered. We might want it later. We don't want to have to download it again later. Eh, just keep it. So <coughs> Linux has not been optimized for SSDs. I mean, because they didn't exist. So we've, we've, we've optimized for our laptops, because we care about our own machine's performance. And we've optimized for our desktops. And again, if, from a storage point of view, they're, they're pretty much the same thing. And then um, people have, vendors, have, have paid us to care about large storage array, like EMC, those kinds of things. So what, what, what is performance? Uh, how, how would you measure performance of a hard drive? Anyone? I'm hearing latency, operations per second. Anyone else? Throughput. An, an app, ooh. Stability. 
What, what, what do you mean stability? That's not really a performance characteristic. I'll concede the point. <laughs> yes, so well, 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 one of the suggestions was megabytes per second, which is great. Um, one, one, one of my colleagues likes to uh, refer to um, this as the, uh, the the, the, the value that they guarantee you will never exceed with a hard drive because they, 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 they measure it under the best possible conditions and quote a single number to you. Latency, measured in microseconds. Yes, absolutely. If, if, if you're doing a read and then you, you use the data in that block to do another read, you care very much about latency. Um, with... Um, and, and, and uh, the quicker your data comes back to you, the quicker your operation will finish. And another suggestion down here, IOs per second. Um, this, this, this is more important. This, 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 this kind of blends latency and bandwidth. Um, it, it's, it's really a, a, a mixture of latency and the parallelism of the drive, because the more IOs, the quicker your IOs return, the uh, the more IOs you can do when you're limited by the number of commands you have outstanding with the drive at a time. So my initial um, challenge from, from my boss was to get a 10% performance improvement with Intel drives over the stock. And that, that, that took me um, probably about half an hour to figure out. Success on my performance report. That was fairly straightforward. Um, the, 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 uh, we have these things called elevators in Linux, and what they do is the, the block layer sends down all the commands, all, so all, 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 the, um, all the reads and writes, and then the elevators go and shuffle it all around and uh, choose which commands to send when, and they are they optimized for single spindle drives and for uh, large data arrays, and there, there, there are some things that you know make a whole lot of sense, like merge adjacent requests of the same type. So you know, if you if you're reading block six and you're reading block seven, send down a two block read, not two one block reads. Fairly straightforward. But the these elevators would wait around um, rather than just handing the data to the drive straight away, and that, that that's absolutely the wrong thing to do. Um, so using the no-op scheduler and just sending the, the, the data straight down gave us a wonderful performance improvement, as I said, 10%. Um, now, at, at least these two elevators understand that SSDs exist and will um, we'll, we'll just not wait. They'll, they'll, they'll send down requests as soon as they can. Stuart. It, 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 it appears that some legacy uh, hard drives will also benefit f from using the no-op elevator. Yeah, on su some workloads really do benefit from using the no-op scheduler. Um, I, as part of my job, I also work with uh, uh,
Thank you very much. I, I hope. Sorry about that, of course. Um, yeah, so the, the, the upshot of the debate for those watching the video was basically that uh, some workloads uh, really, some workloads still benefit from using the NOAP elevator, particularly uh, online transaction processing database benchmarks. Um, and uh, did you want to characterize your, bench your workloads at all? Uh, lots of CPUs issuing and completing data. CFQ likes to do cross-CPU stuff. Lots of CPUs issuing and completing data. CFQ does not like this particularly. So there's still work to do. So here's my second 10% performance improvement. I was looking really good on my weekly metrics. <laughs> Th this actually took me a couple of days. Um, well, so initially we didn't have hardware, um, which, is, which is always a fun situation to be in. And we didn't even have emulators for the hardware. Um, so I wrote one. Um, it was called ATA RAM. In, fa in fact, it still is called ATA RAM. Um, the, what, what, what it does is it, it plugs in at the, uh, at the ATA layer. It pretends to be an ATA driver like um, AHCI, like SATA, ServerWorks, and many, many other um, serial ATA and parallel ATA drivers. And I was optimizing the hell out of that. And uh, then we plug a drive into, um, a, you know, we get a drive and we plug it into an AHCI controller like we all have on our laptops and most of us have on our servers, frankly. Um, and performance is terrible. And of course, no, no plan survives first contact with the enemy or hardware. Um, so yeah, we 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 did we did we we, we ran O profile, got some traces, and there were two functions. Uh, here, here's one of them: HCI QC issue, which is about ten lines of code, and was taking something on the order of forty percent of our CPU time. The CPU was pegged, by the way. We we were CPU bound doing I/O, <laughs> which hasn't been the case in thirty years. Um, yeah, and so. I deleted this one line, and this function dropped off the uh, chart completely. It just wasn't an interesting function to look at anymore. And you're probably wondering, why is it he can just delete this and have it work? Surely it was in there for a reason. Um, so those, th those who've written device drivers know the answer. Uh, but for the rest of you, PCI memory space which is what this write L, read L. We're, we're accessing a register on the AHCI device. And what we're doing is we're saying this, this tag is now an active command. I want you to go and execute this command. And um, PCI writes are posted. And what that means is the CPU, sent, the CPU issues the write and doesn't wait. It just keeps on going. The read forces it to wait. And if you're reading the same device that you wrote, it forces the, the write to go all the way down to that device before the read can complete. So basically, what we're saying there is wait for that command to get to that device, which is stupid. There is no need to wait for the command to hit the device. It's going to get there eventually. We don't have to wait for it. We can get on and do something else, like say, ooh, issuing another command. So that that was uh, that was a big one. Doesn't it hurt all AHCI controllers everywhere? Doesn't it hurt all AHCI controllers everywhere? Uh, yes, but if you don't have <laughs> if you don't have an SSD attached, you don't even notice. Um, if, you have, if, 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 if you have a regular drive, you're doing 200 IOs per second. You don't care about an extra 1,000 CPU cycles for every... When, you, when you're doing on the order of 10,000, having 1,000 CPU cycles really starts to notice. You can see things start to get a little bit harder to get any kind of performance improvement after that. Um, so we were doing four reads from the controller for every command. We were doing the read that I just deleted. And then at interrupt time, we're doing three reads. We're reading from the interrupt status register to find out which port it interrupted. We're reading from the port interrupt status register to find out 
what happened on that port. And then we do, and, that, and we find out that what happened was the command completed. And then we go and find out which command uh, by reading another register on the device. Has anyone in here ever written a network device driver? Uh, Stephen? How well would you say a network device, how many packets per second would you say a network device driver can do that does four I.O. reads per packet? How many packets do you think we can do per second on that? You count how long those I.O.s take? You count how long those I.O.s take, which I did. Um, I, on, on, on this laptop on the way down here, um, takes about 960. Um, I, I measured about 780 nanoseconds. Turns out it's about 960 uh, CPU cycles on a, a 1.2 gigahertz core 2, wi during which time it can execute mm, about 18,000 instructions, eight, sorry, 1,800 instructions. Um, so that's bad. Oh, that's per read, and there's four of them. So that's over 7,000 instructions could have been issued, but we decided to wait around for I.O. to happen. It's not quite that bad. We, we can cover some of that latency, but I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible. So the AHCI dev device driver has uh, the ability to use multiple interrupts. Uh, so what, what, you can, what you can do, you can set into a mode where each port gets its own interrupt, and that lets us take out one of the reads. I mean, that's not great. We're still doing two I.O. reads per interrupt, but two is better than three. It's a 50% performance improvement, right? Um, so the problem is Linux actually doesn't support multiple MSI interrupts. We support multiple MSI X interrupts, but not multiple MSI interrupts. And there's a reason for that, which is that multiple MSI interrupts are actually horrible. You can't do a whole bunch of stuff with them that you'd want to be able to do. Uh, so I decided, what the hell, I'll go and implement it. Um, and that took six months and a lot of arguing. And the patches still aren't merged. And in fact, I, I, I let them rot for a bit because I got discouraged and moved on to other fun things. And uh, I rewrote them on the way down here on the plane. And my laptop is running them right now, so they do work. But um, so I, I, I can't really do effective performance testing. I don't have an SSD myself. So some, some of my good friends at Oracle volunteered to do some performance testing for me. And uh, the, perform the performance improvements I actually got for them, I've titled this slide third 10% performance improvement. Uh, the actual performance improvement we got from this was um, none. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't understand how it is. I have a suggestion from the audience. The suggestion is that possibly taking the read out doesn't push the com means that the uh, the command doesn't get pushed to the hardware. I don't think that's true. I I, I, I I see why you suggest it, but I don't. This is the read in the interrupt path, not the read in the submission path. So that that that's not it. It, it may be we were doing enough speculation, speculative execution around it that we're actually hiding the latency effectively. Um, Okay, the, the suggestion is that maybe now we're moving stuff out to multiple CPUs, things aren't being processed where they used to be, so we're, we're, we're seeing cross-CPU traffic. Yeah, so one of the things you can't do with multiple MSIs is have them get run to different CPUs. You can, with MSIX, you can target a, an interrupt to a particular CPU. With multiple MSI, they all go to the same CPU. So we haven't actually changed anything compared to having a single interrupt for the whole device compared to having one per port. So, good try. I, I, I like that answer. I would love it to be true. Another suggestion. Is, this is, somewhat is there any practical way to go, have it go, have the, have the driver know that the controller only has one port connected, so any operation that's not a, hey, there's a new device plugged in, must be for the only port in use? Yeah, so the, the suggestion is that if we find out that the device, that the controller only has one port in use, we know which port is going to be generating the interrupt, and so we don't actually need to check. And that, 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 that's a good suggestion, but doesn't actually explain this performance degradation. By the way, I, I love it that you're trying to fix my problem. This is great. Stephen! <laughs>
maybe the hardware's crap, um, and, and, and is delaying the uh, completion. Yeah, actually, that, 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 that's plausible. Yeah, I, I can believe that. I mean, obviously, it, it can't possibly be true because this is an Intel chipset, and... <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can probably find some people. Yes. Yep. Trent, Trent is absolutely correct. That uh, if I just go back to a, I can, I can test this theory by going back to a single, by, by going back to using a single MSI and actually not, and uh, incorporating the suggestion from over here that we just don't do the read of, and we just make an assumption. Yeah, yeah, cool, thanks, I'll try that. I'll, 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 I'll credit you in the, in the changelog if, if it works out. Um, so, okay, so now we've looked at three, three different potential 10% performance improvements. Let's have a look at how all this, we, we, we've, got to, we've got to try harder at this point to find out what's going on. So, for a, a colleague, I actually traced the AHCI interrupt handler. She, she, she wants to know how, how exactly is it that a command is completed? Oh wait, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, this, I, I was talking about all this. Uh, right, this, this, this is what I actually wanted to talk about. So, this, 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 is, this is a call trace. Um, AHCI interrupts is where obviously the interrupt comes in, we call it HCI port intra, find out which port it was, well sorry, we find out which port it was and then call port intra. And we get to skip the HCI interrupt routine with the multiple MSIs. And you can see we go back up through the stack. If you, it, where, where you see the, uh, the square brackets, that, that's a call through a function pointer. So if, you, if, you're, if you're looking through the source for it, you won't see ATA QC complete call ATA SCSI QC complete. You'll see it called complete fun. And I've gone through and figured out that it complete fun has been set to ATA SCSI QC complete. So that's what, two, four, six, eight, ten. About 11 functions there. And then we stop at raise soft IQ IQ off. <coughs> and do all that. And at that point, we send, uh, we're, I'm, I'm assuming at this point that the, the um, drive is oversubscribed with commands, that we want to send more than 32 commands at once down to the drive. So we're in a higher I.O. load situation, which is one of the interesting situations to optimize for. You also want to optimize for latency, so you want to know when a command's being completed quickly. So, you, so your application can get on with figuring out where to read from next. But you also want to optimize for high load situations. Has any, uh, has any given to any sort of QoS on this so you can actually say this application is latency sensitive, um, please mark it as the most high priority on yep. Yep. Okay, so the question is, has anyone, has anyone thought about quality of service so we can mark individual um, uh, tasks or indeed threads as uh, having high priority I/O and other ones as having low priority. And the answer is yes. Um, this is achieved through the uh, the elevators, and that that's why um, echo no op to the scheduler it, it, to the elevator is not um, the desired outcome, um, because then you can't no op really is no op, uh, so you can't um, you lose your QoS. Yeah. Yeah, but if it all happens quicker, even for your QoS applications, then it's still a win. <coughs> um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Jens did not appreciate me taking out all the elevators. Um, yeah, so we we, 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 we we go all the way back up into the block layer, and then all the way back down into SCSI and into ATA, and then into a a the HCI driver, and try and issue another command. Um, does anyone see a problem with this? So we, it, 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 it takes a long, long time to, for us to issue another command once one command's come back to us. So we've been kicking around a few ideas about how to do this uh, better. Unfortunately, they all involve fairly major surgery to libata, so I've been putting it off. Um, we can, um, what one suggestion, and this is innovative and bold, is that we, ha we had a problem with this application wants to submit lots of 
of I.O. So we have like write V, read V. Why don't we have a, an ATA command read V? Which, okay, the dri drives don't know about yet. We haven't told the spec people we want to do this. But we can, we can pretend we have one. Ad adapt the block layer, the SCSI layer, the ATA layer, and the device drivers to know all about this uh, ATA read V, write V command. And when, it gets, when the command gets all the way down into the driver, we can start doing mini uh, block layer kinds of things like sending commands to the drive. I'm not convinced about this. I'm not sure this is a good idea at all. Um, but it's, it's an interesting idea. And it, it might work. Um, an, another way, which actually has been done for a long time by older, really crappy SCSI device drivers for hardware that only supports set, sending out a single command at a time, and where the difference between doing this and not doing this is two megabytes a second versus five megabytes a second, is to um, pretend you can accept more commands than you actually can. And then when you're down in AHCI interrupt, you look at your internal queue of commands that you've told it you can accept, but you actually couldn't. And round about AHCI port intra, you you, you, you steal the tag back that you, you just sent out, stick into the new command, send it out, and then do all of this. That's, that, that's my current preferred solution. We, we, we have a tendency to hate having queuing in the device drivers. We have queuing elsewhere in the stack. We shouldn't need it. But clearly we do. Like we've, 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 we've got to have more. There's, there's just so much latency here getting all the we're taking locks, we're dropping locks, and really, we already know there's, come up, there's work there that we could be doing. We're just refusing to take it. How, so, oh, it's about 20 past? 25 past? Okay. Yeah, I think we've got time for this. Okay. So, one of, one of the fun things about Flash is that it, uh, you, you have this whole erase block thing going on. Um, and e e e even with Intel drives, they work, up, they work a lot better. They can uh, remap. The, the remapping layer works more effectively if you can tell it which blocks you're not using anymore. Hard drives don't care whether there's data there or not. But um, if, if, if the device thinks the block is in use, it's got to preserve its contents. If it knows, if it's been told that the block is no longer in use, then it can just ignore the contents of it. So what, what, what we like to do at this point is have the file systems. When you, when you delete a file, the file system knows those blocks aren't in use anymore. What we need is a way for the file system to tell the device, yeah, all, the, all that data, forget it, it's gone. The user can't see it anymore. It's completely unrecoverable. Just use it, to, just put it on your free list. That's right, that it's safe to erase it. Well, the, you, the, the, you don't have to copy it when you're going to erase that block. And this, this, this is a nice generic... Sorry, was, was there a question back there? No, okay. Um, so this, this is a nice kind of generic thing. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a write, but it's a write with no data. Um, so uh, my, my good colleague down here at the front, Dave Woodhouse, uh, added the uh, discard operation to the block layer and uh, did the work to involve passing it down. Um, did you get somebody else to do the VFAT support or did you do it yourself? You, you did it? Okay. He, he also implemented support for VFAT and he did the device support for MTD, the memory technology devices layer, which is i.e. Flash. Uh, that is Flash that we support natively rather than Flash that's off on the SSD on the other end of the cable. Um, we've, we've now got support from EXT4 and BTRFS and swap. Uh, I was asking, talking to Dave Chinner about XFS. He says there's some internal reworking needs to be done, but you know it's something he just hasn't had time to to get done yet. Yeah. What about EXT3? We don't know. Well, EXT3 is painful because it involves interactions with the journal and make sure it gets done at the right time. How does EXT4 avoid that? I have no idea. <laughs> All right. 
we're not ext3 or ext4 people um, so what, what, what I've been working on, and indeed, and Dave's been helping me, is uh, support f for discard on IDE, SCSI, and LibATA. This turns out to be a gigantic pain. Um, so the ATA committee, T13, have defined an operation they call trim. And what trim lets you do is you pass it some blocks, and it tells the drive, yeah, forget about those. They don't exist anymore. That sounds like a good idea, um, except we have we, we, we have failed to be able to implement a command. <laughs> we failed to tell IDE how to do it. We've been trying for a couple of months now, and we've, we've got these traces showing us sending short commands, and we just can't fig we're not smart enough to figure out how to use the IDE layer. So we thought, okay, we'll switch over to, to libata. We'll try, try and get lib libata is the replacement for the IDE layer. Um, there's, there's everything now happens through SCSI, so libata plugs into SCSI. All right, how do you send down an IDE command that has no SCSI counterpart? You make one up. And then the T10 Sanders committee says, oh, oh wait, wait, they're, 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 they've, they've got trim. We, sh we should have that too. We, sh we should have that function. We shouldn't let T13 get ahead of us because it's all about competition. Competition's good. Um, and then they fight, and they fight within the standards committees, and I find standards committees very painful to deal with. Um, they, they, they start arguing about things like what the definition of is, is. <laughs> so we, 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 we just went with, with one of the drafts of, of what they've actually published, um, just to have something. And, and in fact, we only enable it for libata devices, and even then, only for libata devices that claim to actually support trim. So I, I, I think we're OK, but I don't think we want to submit this code for publication, for, for merge yet. Uh, I, I, I would feel a little, I'd feel dirty Try submitting code for merge that used a command that was, wasn't standardized yet. And, and part of the reason that T10 has these fights is that they don't just have the Flash people um, saying, hey, 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 we, we want to implement this cool feature. They have the enterprise uh, array vendors saying, ooh, hey, we could use that too. And we've got all these other things. And, and, and soon your hammer has 13 heads and, 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 and claws coming out at odd angles. And, uh, so, and, 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 and then storage vendors come to us and say, oh, yeah, that, that, that trim support you've got, that, that's very nice, but it's useless for us. And um, if, if, if you implement it like that, f Linux is going to die in the data center. At which point I so Windows does it your way, does it? Like, no. Yeah, Linux is so dead in the data center. They, so what, 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 what's actually going on is that they, they want to do what they call virtual storage. So you, 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 you buy a machine that can take like 10 terabytes of storage. And 10 terabytes of storage is expensive today, but will be cheaper tomorrow. So you buy one terabyte of storage. And you tell your users, hey, we've got 10 terabytes of storage. And once they've started to use like 800, uh, 800 gigabytes, you, you run out and buy another drive. And then you have two. Um, but so in order for this to work really effectively, they also want to know when blocks aren't being used. And, and that's, that's fair enough. But their allocation size <laughs> is 768k. They only keep track of which blocks have, been have actually been allocated in multiples of 768k. So they want, they want us to round. They, they want the file system to be laid out so that we fill up one 768k bit and then use another 768k bit and then free them in multiples of 768k. Uh, it's just not happening. You, you know, how do they get to 768K? I, I assume... It's I, I, a fiber channel packet. 768K is a fiber channel packet, really. That, that's a really big packet. Oh, they're really, really big packets. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I was assuming that the people who wanted 512K and the people who wanted one megabyte had a fight. <laughs> 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 what I'm saying makes a lot more sense. 
<laughs> well, it, it, it does, absolutely, yes. That's okay. Yeah, so the T11 committee are now getting the blame for what the T10 committee are up to. Okay. The packet is two megabits plus a bunch of header stuff and blah, 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 and by the time you work it all out, and you end up there. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So we, we, we've, we've, actually, we've actually come to a compromise, which is that we're not going to allow our file systems to support them. But what we will do is when a file system wants to issue a discard, it will opportunistically try to grow the size of the discard to the largest possible extent it can. So any unused, any blocks of file system those are unused on either side, it will, it will send a discard for all of those. And I've talked to the Flash people and they're okay with that. So we, we actually have a compromise that isn't going to be too painful. Some of the file system people are like, you want us to do what? But, well, you know, then their file system will lose in the data center. So, you know, obviously. <laughs> Yeah. I did finish writing my slide deck on this. I just forgot to delete the excess copies. Uh, questions? What, what does what get? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm optimizing for better performance. I, I, I want you to not only be able to saturate your device's bandwidth, and by the way, we do. We, we hit 250 megabytes a second on a 3 gigabit cable. And while you're thinking, hey, 3 gigabits, I can divide by 8, you're, you're, you're cheating me out of 70 megabytes a second, uh, protocol overhead, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, 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 are we, we are filling the device cable. You can't cram any more bits down it. Oh, about discard. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I misheard you. Right, is discard pr um, prolonging device uh, lifespan? Yes. Yeah, it, 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 it's allowing, it's probably allowing the device to operate faster because it doesn't have to copy as much data, and because it isn't writing as much data, you are prolonging the lifespan of the disk. Yes, good question, thank you. What should user space not do in order to not suck? That is such an open-ended question. <laughs> um, in, in terms of not, in terms of not suck with SSDs. Wow, I haven't even been thinking about what what I can be telling other people to do. I've just been concerned with making my own crap run faster. Um, no, random overwriting files is good. The only thing I'd say, I mean, you don't have to worry about it so much, but you could mention the block size stuff. Block sizes, okay, yeah. So some vendors uh, have larger block sizes than others internally to the device, and so they will perform better when you use a block size that is a multiple rather than a fraction of their, uh, their, their, their internal block size. Um, this is much less of a problem. Intel's, block, Intel's internal block size is 512 bytes. I can only assume that our competitors will say, oh wait, they get really good performance and we don't in these cases. We're going to do the same thing. Um, so I, 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 from that point of view, it's a problem that's going away. What isn't going away is the protocol overhead of sending a lot of small blocks instead of one big one. Um, I, I, I have some slides uh, that were done by a colleague of mine. Oh, I meant to show that slide. That would be a good slide to show. Um, yeah. So I ignore the fact that these are a competitive benchmark. Um, this, this, these were done for something for a talk that was telling people how wonderful Intel SSDs are. Um, you can see, see here that our MLC drive, which is our cheaper model, is outperforming these other vendors' SLC drives, which are uh, their expensive models. Um, that doesn't mean our cheap drives, cheaper drives are actually cheap. They're, they're still expensive, but um, you're getting what you pay for. So, but you, you, you can see, um, even though we have a 512 byte block size, the protocol overhead is such that you still don't top out until you get to 32k. Now, the, these measurements were performed with Windows. Um, IO Meter is a Windows tool that Intel um, wrote. Um, I think published, and it's, it's very similar to IO Zone. Um, 
if I were better organized, I would have my own numbers. But um, in order to get numbers onto a slide, you have to have them improved by Intel Legal. And I just wasn't willing to go through that. I'm sorry. But yeah, you, 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 you can see the trend. You know, it, a larger block size is going to give you better performance. Um, is, is this relevant for just the high performance, high end SSDs or the L cheaper one that I have in my netbook? Right, so the. I, I, I don't know about your netbook. Um, many of. <laughs> so, I mean, we all benefit when I.O. goes quicker. Um, but. Um, Shaving a thousand cycles off something that's taking a millisecond isn't very interesting. Shaving a thousand cycles off something that's taking a nanosecond is. Um, and you know, use it something that takes a microsecond is of moderate interest. Um, you probably won't notice. I mean, you are you are getting the benefit of these changes, but you won't be able to measure it because it's just dominated by the the, the time it's taking. Sorry, we, 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 you, 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 you can um, buy a replacement drive for that, you know. <laughs> but surely you're doing less computing, so you're using less power. Doing less computing, so you're losing less power. Um, yeah, probably. Um, this, 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 this slide deck, by the way, also has all kinds of fun things about um, power. Oh, yeah. There we go. You, our so, so that's against a real hard drive. Um, the, I've, I've, I've got the URL of these slides in my slides, so when we publish the slides, you'll get to uh, see those. I'm, I'm being told I'm out of time, so thank you all for coming. Um, I need to put up the disclaimer.